Hey, sorry, I'm still kind of getting used to Streamlabs, so I gotta I had to click back and forth between a bunch of different tabs to find the tab that I was looking for. Either way. It's been a second since I've done a Tuki stream. The last time I, since I did Tuki anything, the last time I did it was the stream on last Saturday where I experienced Delta Judgment's wild ride firsthand. Well, a couple of things have happened since then. Uh, chief among them is the fact that Delta's, Delta's maps are way easier now, and they're actually kind of fun to navigate. They're not completely breezy, like the um, that one annoying diamond puzzle in Amethyst Caves is still there, but it's, you know, it's considerably better. The entire path is considerably better. But what I want to do is I'm just going to go to patch notes and I'm just going to start looking. Because this is this is all Delta stuff. We covered some of that, but not all of it. I want to start, though, with the FUMO stuff. So ornamental planes it is.
I've heard that these worlds are great, so <laughs> I, I want to go and I want to go and see what's up. There's also birch forest over here, which I don't I don't think I've explored that either. But one thing at a time, otherwise I'm never gonna be able to do everything here. Ooh. This is super pretty. Ah, this is the other location. <gasps> what was that one fan game that had the sea slugs? Was it Ultraviolet? I, I forget at this point. It was either that or... Because she awaits, she awaits was the um, tarot cards. I think it was Ultraviolet. Love me some, love me some cute marine life. <sighs> this place is super cute. Very pretty. <laughs> I'm having to like catch myself so that I, I say things other than wow this is really pretty over and over and over again. But really, not sure what else there is to say. This is nice. There's a bunch of slugs. Bunch of adorable little guys. Oh, right, underwater. I always forget because it's not perfectly consistent. Also, hang on, uh, Trump is still. Yeah, drum is still my favorite of the facts. I noticed as I was walking up to the balcony was the um, stairs were on the balcony. Okay. So now I think we move on to the Delta stuff. And this stuff has been nerfed pretty significantly. And I'd feel bad, but uh, frankly, it was pretty awful before. <laughs> so I'm glad that these are toned down. There's also a certain world that I'm going to be looking for. I was sort of like, I was wandering around yesterday, sort of testing the waters to see if it was nerfed and how much it was nerfed. It was nerfed a significant amount, but I ended up finding something that I had completely missed last time that is hilarious. Now, I don't know, I don't remember exactly where it is, but I have a vague idea. It's a long dream route. This part's still annoying, but I think I think I read in the patch notes that they reduced the amount of snakes in this area by a little bit. There we are. The other thing that I noticed is that um, there's an area pretty far in called Crow's Nest. And the thing about Crow's Nest is that there are crows everywhere. 
and you have to find a black egg somewhere in the map that will teleport you to the next map in the sequence. Tell if I know what map that is. Well, the problem is... How to put it. If you chainsaw more than three of the three of the crows, it will just send you away. I don't know if it sends you to abandoned campsite or to morning void or what, but it sends you it it it, it kills you. <laughs> and you have to redo the whole route. And I think that's still the case, but uh, they also added a functionality where if you equip Grave, it will just make all of them translucent, so you can just pass right through them and find the egg that you're looking for. Now, I'm going to go up here, but I just want to point out... You can just skip this part. <laughs> this used to be an out-of-bounds section, and now there's just a comical grate on top of the... on top of the void there. But I, I had kind of an interesting experience earlier to, earlier today. It's the first time in a really long time that I've I got excited about something. I got excited about something thanks to a ad on YouTube because uh, YouTube has finally decided to grow to grow a pair and is now actively blocking ad blockers. So I actually get to watch ads again in all of their uh, glory. I love seeing 50 ads for 50 different horror movies and having to remind myself that they are, in fact, 50 different movies. Because they all look like the same five movies with almost identical premises, the exact same structure, the exact same structure of the trailer, and then maybe, like, one difference. <laughs> Okay, that's kind of cute, actually. Okay, this is the this is the map that I, I still gotta go and look. What the combination is here. So I start by going up. And then it's left, right? Nah. It's up. And then right, left. And then right, right, left, right. Left, left, up. And then this go to go through the second door. Oh, oops. Left, left, up. Uh, yeah, from left to right, use the second doorway. I guess not. Is this the one where I go backwards? It's not. Interesting. Okay, I'll try- well, let me just try every doorway, because the- the wiki is not updated yet. Maybe it's randomized, because I swore the second- the, the second doorway- the second doorway has worked before. Okay, it's the third, and then you backtrack. And then I'll go- I'll activate that. This is now actually a connection. Now, I don't know if this has a path in it that leads to leads back to Dream Route, so I am going to have to go back and do that. But it is nice that there are actual connections now, and it's not just, oh, hey, screw off. <laughs> a 
go back to start, do not pass go, etc. But what I was saying... Normally YouTube, normally YouTube ads are 90% ads for first-person shooters that I'm never going to play, ad for, ads for horror movies that I'm never going to watch because they all look the same, and the occasional ad for Intuit TurboTax. Yippee! I love, I love, I love it when companies spend over 11 million dollars in lobbying. Um, but for once, I got an ad that I actually was semi-interested in. Because every once in a while, there will be an ad for an indie game peppered in there, and sometimes it's... Sometimes it's a AAA game in disguise, and sometimes it's actually something that I'm interested in. This one... It's a game by a German studio called Harold Halibut. That is a... It, it's sort of like... I want to say Claymation Bioshock, but it's not quite- it doesn't really have that horror flair that Bioshock does. But I did say Claymation. The entire game, just based on the stuff that I saw on the- I saw in the, um, on the Steam page, the entire game looks like a- a lost movie by Laika. It's so cool. And it also launches in like three days, so I think on Tuesday I'm just going to I'm just going to drop everything. I I only have one class on Tuesday, so it's not going to interrupt anything. I'm just going to stream it <laughs> because, damn, that game looks cool. I will always uh, I'll always jump to support artisan projects like that. They're like, hey, what if we made a game where everything was animated in claymation? Well, it would take a while, but. So far, based on the stuff in the trailer, it looks so pretty. So I'm very curious to see what the gameplay is like, if it's like a point and click, or if it's closer to something like an adventure game. I don't know. But it is it has captured my attention. But the, the absolute state of the um, spring-slash-summer horror movie is kind of depressing. Because they really do all look identical. Oh, I am going to have to do this again. And it's not like I, I don't respect what a horror movie can bring to the table, but come on, some of these. Some of these are just straight up bad. Because you sort of get a sense as you watch, as you watch trailers, you sort of get a sense of the kind of movie that a mo that a you get a sense for the kind of movie that it is before the trailer is even done. And with horror movies, it's so obvious. It's so painfully obvious. It's like, oh, great. There's no music. So very soon it's going to be no music, but they're going to play a stinger. And then they're going to slowly creep in with the music that's going to be the theme of the movie that they're going to overuse. It's like, it's like Oppenheimer. It's like dead silence followed by loud stinger, followed by dead silence, followed by loud stinger. Oh wait, I, I, I think, 
I don't know exactly how where I go from here. I think I interact with that one that one girl who has the flag. If this is what I remember it to be, then uh, you're in for a treat. Oh yeah, this is definitely it. Behold. F-Zero World, let's go! <laughs> You know what, Delta? All is forgiven. Because <laughs> this is hilarious. Oh my god. <laughs> it like tracks your score. That's awesome. Hang on, I can beat that time. I wonder if there's a way to run it, to do it again, maybe interact with the girl and then head back in, maybe? Yeah. I'll give it one more shot. There we go, that's better. That is hilarious. <laughs> like, I am... All is, all is forgiven, Delta. Shit, that's another world I gotta go visit. I have to go visit the expanded, the, um, Art Gallery 2 Electric Boogaloo. The, the new, the map by Nadeko that's absolutely gigantic. Okay, there's these two... Oh god, don't these teleport you back to... Okay, good, they don't teleport you back to abandoned campsite. I don't know why I bothered to check. <laughs> why is this map so large? <laughs> okay, this one's just funny. Tan Urasuki. Urasuki Beach Pape. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there you are. Oh, not even. There's a connection to emotions maze somewhere around here, but this map is gigantic, so it's kind of hard to tell where I'm supposed to go. Let's see. Oh. Um, the new area going south on the westmost orange masked woman with a car. Okay, so I was I was actually pretty close. Somewhere around here, there should be an orange, a woman with an orange mask. Wait, I'm a dumbass. Uh, westmost. There you are. I can't read. So do I interact with the cart? 
Ah, no. There's another one. the connection. Okay, quickly. Oh my god, this... <laughs> the music. This is a this is a Yume wo Samiyo moment. crossing back on. What's going on here? Interesting. Oh, this this map is outdated then. Hang on. Okay, so I just gotta wander around then. <laughs> What if the dark version of Pale Plateau was called Stale Plateau? That would be cool, I think. Okay, that's the spawn. There should be a snake here somewhere. I don't know where. There's the little bastard. That's a cool sprite, I'm, I have to say. Okay, one of the one of these snakes at random will be the one that teleports me out of here.
Ah, this is the one. Serpent Ruins B. Oh god. <laughs> so there's a passage, a one-way passage to Serpent Ruins A. Wrong. A uh, one-way passage to Pointed Labyrinth. Wrong. A one-way path, a passage to Pale Plateau that I'm not sure is a one-way path. And then a path to Zeta District. God, the panorama in the background is actually very cool. It's like genuinely there are some cool ideas here. Right, in this place it used to be full of shadow ladies. Hang on. Serp Ruins B. Interesting. Uh, to... Well, I'll admit that this looks hellish. Hang on. Let me head back up so I'm aligned with the top left so I know where I am. Gonna do a good old fashioned. Yeah, so right now I am lined, so I have to go one, two, three. One, two, three, four over. I have to go four blocks. And I should just be able to go to to go straight down a space tunnel. Huh? Weird. Okay, so now I'm here. Connection is gone. Hmm. I see. Back to the top, then. <sighs> it may be less painstaking, it's still pretty painstaking. Is this a one-way path? Am I stuck here? I think I might be stuck here. Uh, okay. Let's move on, then. I'll come back here later. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> that sucks a lot. Jeez. I'm 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 abandoning ship too. I'm just gonna wait until I have a until I have a full map to work with. The, the map may be better, but it's still it is still Delta Judgment. So yeah. Not ideal. With that, um let's see. 
Oh, the exit's bottom right. Ah, I wish I... It's whatever. I can just do it later. Because I also wanted to go to the new Luok stuff. I've already visited some of it, but I need to go see the rest of it. This transition is so cool. I love that. See as I see as I Kev. Um Okay, so claustrophobia is from House of Vases, so I just need to go find House of Vases again. This map, this map is so cool. Oh, <laughs> I, have, I haven't seen this. Hello, mustachio gentleman. It doesn't even a mustache. That's just a like, giant nose. <laughs> ah, the music's so good. Right, Blue Palm Road. Where does this lead? Dark bunker, white pillar docks. Ooh. Well, it's Verdant Nexus. Okay. Let me go. Let me go do claustrophobia first. Then I'll come back for that. Cause that also looks really cool. There's the hidden path. Oh, right, and the hidden path is nothing. <laughs> right. This area is so cool. My one wish is that the music didn't fade out every time you went through that transition, because I, the best part of the music is like a minute in and you barely get to hear it.
Yeah, it's... It's a, it's a whole thing, unfortunately. It's like, I don't like... I, I, I'm in a similar boat that I really didn't like the Delta worlds in their previous incarnation, but going out of the way to harass them about it is not cool. I'm pretty sure they got the memo after the after the um, 150th person that said that the maps were not fun and not well balanced. Like people were, people were kind of miffed about it on the the um, YNO Discord. I didn't even bother checking the official Yumatuki Discord. I can imagine that they were livid because they're usually not quite as nice as the people are over on YNO. So I can only imagine. Right, there was a mention of a hidden path that I missed last time. Oh! The pixel art for the main area was done by Meow. Awesome. Hey. Yeah, this, this map is awesome. Oh, wait. Yeah, there we go. Let's me po let lets me poke around here a little bit more. Whoa. I didn't see this one before. I didn't see anything past this point before. I just completely I completely missed that secret path. Big lock. Oh, a menu fee! Holy shit! It's not what I was expecting at all. Also, I do want to point out, um, yesterday, or I think day before, there were somewhere between 250 260 people online it's, it's insane the number of players is gradually getting higher and higher and it makes me very happy more people are finding about uh, finding out about this absolute gem of a game I got a bug. I got a bug, Sam, and asked what the what the um, average number of players online is for Pokey Rogue because I imagine Poker Rogue has already surpassed this, even though this has been around for way longer. Okay. So our next goal should be House of Vases, accessible from Portrait Collection, Thrift Shop, and Floating Window World. Before I do anything, I want to check to see if Portrait Collection is even there, because it's a it's a Variable 44 event. If it's not there, no biggie. I can just go through Floating Window World. But it's worth a, it's worth a check. And nope. All right, Floating Window World, it is. And I more or less remember the path. The hardest part is always finding the finding the nexus locations. 
Uh, right. I don't... Okay, it's actually not in here. It's in Red Street Light. Uh, Morphous... There you are, Morphous Maroon Space. I, I do love how much of a dot flow homage this place is. Mainly the coops. Mainly because of this guy. <laughs> the creature. But if you if you have not played Dot Flow, I cannot recommend it enough. It is very it's it's horror based. It's a lot scarier than Tuki is. But if you can if you can bear it, it's so good. It's so good. I think it's this one. Okay, good. I was double I always double guess myself. It's kind of a it's kind of a hassle to get the to um reach the end of the game. I mean for reasons that I won't for reasons that I won't go into too much detail about in case you haven't you haven't reached that far in the game. It's kind of a hassle to get that far, but it's worth it. It's so cool. Okay. Floating window world to claustrophobia. Oh there's there's actually paths now. There's paths on the map. Oh, quite literally hidden. Interesting. I see. Oh. so confused <laughs> in a good way huh i don't think i ever actually saw that event i'll be honest I missed I missed a lot of the big events. Like I think I, th I think I saw the I think I saw the um the one of the sewers maybe, but I don't even I don't even remember if I saw that one. Hey, what's up? Okay. Uh, 
Oh, so this is ran this is a random warp. It's a good question. Ooh, hello. I love the I, I love the gimmick of this place. Oh, I just had really bad luck, huh? <laughs> so just went in. I went in and then immediately went back out. But it's completely random where this where this puts you. Huh. Whoa, what the hell? <laughs> Yo. I saw this on the wiki. This is super cool. Dang it, I was just here. Ah, uh, here again. I think there's one more. I still haven't found the other the other half of that map with the with the bleeding heads. Ooh, this is new. Oh, it's this place! Right. I've been here before. The music here is spectacular. This is a vending machine. <laughs> this is kind of like the, um, oh, what am I thinking of? There's that one, there's that one, um, event in Yumaniki. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm sorry about that. It happens. Life goes on. Damn it, I'm here again. Okay. So where to go from here? Shadow Shadow Lady Estate? <laughs> oh oh. I see. 
So it takes you direct. There's a chance it takes you directly to Shadow Lady Estate. I'm. That's a one in forty. I'm not gonna bother, frankly. Considering how long it took me to get to get pia um, piano alley, I don't like my odds on that. New room in Garden World connection to Chromatic Limbo from Dim Graveyard, huh? Many theme sixty. Ooh. I've been to Copper Tube Desert before, but I haven't been here. Th this game, it, it takes some explaining. And you, you seem fairly young, so... I can't just name off games and relate them to each other and have it come, have it like immediately be, oh, it's that. I can't just bring up Yumaniki and expect you to know what that is. So... There is a couple of games that have kind of a similar a similar vibe as this, a bit more... a bit more tilted towards horror. Uh, Undertale and Amori. Which you probably heard of Undertale, you probably haven't heard of Amori, if I had to guess. Both of them are inspired by the game Yumaniki by Kikiyama, Japanese developer. Where you kind of just wander around and go through an abstract representation of the main character's life. It's very, very weird and very very weird and creepy. There's not really a lot of plot. You kind of just walk around and get a vague sense of the kind of things that the character has been through. Oh, God, right, I did. So... This game is a fan project started in 2011 that's heavily based on Yumaniki, and it's larger in just about every way. It's got more effects, it's got way more worlds, a bunch of people contribute to it. And I've kind of just been, I've been playing it on, I've been playing it Recorded or on stream, etc., for over a year at this point. It's a, it's amazing. Uh, let's see. Okay, so there's supposed to be a connection in here somewhere. <laughs> oh, that's not good. There's just pipes.
Hey, I mean... <laughs> Guilty as charged. Love these kind of games. Not to mention, nobody... Almost nobody makes content for this stuff. <laughs> you got... For Yumatuki, you have... It's basically just me, Yunari, Pareko, and, um... I'm trying to think who else. Like, sure, surely, surely there has to be someone else. There's a couple of people who stream this game in Japanese, but as far as English, I think it's just the three of us. <laughs> and I happen to think I barely count. Natal, Uwa... Right, Nadeko. Okay, that, that's, that's what we'll do next. Oh, right, that's easy, that's easy. I mean, the hardest part is having the confidence to put your stuff out there. I know, e easier said than done. But... Really. Like, there's no... There, there's nothing stopping you besides having... Having the motivation and also... Being in a position where you can do it without annoying your family members, I think, is the main thing. Cause that that was always the thing the thing that got in the way for me. Also, I'm probably going to be here for the next half an hour. This map is gigantic. There's also Supposedly, there's a connection to Omari's Labyrinth in here somewhere? I don't know where. Oh, that's adorable. Oh right, this is the funny room. <laughs> this is the funny room where the other the other portal just doesn't work. I I wish I had saved this and done this blind because I I ended up exploring this and was just getting more and more flustered as I kept opening up new doors to places that I hadn't even seen yet. I wonder if there's a map on the wiki. Come on, nah. It's too, too large to have a map. This area always kind of reminded me of Antichamber. A little bit. And I remember hearing the creator of Antichamber actually ended up making a new game, so maybe I'll... I, I kind of want to play that at some point.
Dear God, <laughs> this is also going to be in the main area, isn't it? Yep, thought so. <gasps> 28! <laughs> we found it. I figured it would be in here somewhere. It's probably going to be it's probably going to be very delayed. Oh, that's the entrance. so weird wandering through this place and, and getting so many of the references that just I imagine just look like gibberish otherwise like that's pillar that's pillar arc right there I don't quite get that you know what I'm not gonna bother with bat wings I'm kind of terrified that bat is just is going to persist across the entire map. vending machine. I think this up here is a work in progress. Yeah, damn it. Sad. Okay, 28 is 28 is another thing that is a bit difficult to explain. One of the one of the more prolific authors in Tuki is Kotensu. And at this point, it's a running joke that Kotensu sort of has their own, their own sort of story between their di between all their different worlds, and it revolves around the number twenty eight. And after a certain point, it kind of just became a meme. And <laughs> twenty eight is now just permanently linked to Yumituki. These paintings are so cool. I was just here. Huh. 
<laughs> I I do love the ever present the, the Yumituki brain worm that makes people that just fills people with the urge to make their own Yumaniki Yuma fan game after seeing the cool things that other people have done in Yumituki or Yumaniki or any other fan game for that matter because there are a lot of these there are like hundreds at least Hey, wait a minute. Both of those lead to the same room? Okay. Now, the map that I really want to see, let me find... Art... Oops. Art Exposition, there you are. Is there a map of just this part? No, there isn't. Damn it. Six hundred four on the fan on the wiki. Plus, a f pl um, plus a few that are quarantined or not on the wiki for whatever reason. So, the the total number has got to be like six somewhere around six thirty, six forty. Okay, this is loud. Shit. <laughs> Thanks, Nadeko. Ooh. At this point, I'm just going down the list to see... Okay, I haven't seen this yet. Oh, that's so cute. That's, um... That's... Fossil Lake? It's either Fossil Lake or Nocturnal Grove. I forget what the map is called. I think it's Fossil Lake. Yeah, there, there are some people who have the gall to say that um, Yumaniki is inspired by Undertale because they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> okay. I think I get, l let's go all the way to the right and then just start scanning across. I want to see if I can find this Omaris, this uh, Omaris connection. Oh, dang it. One-way connection.
need to find a way back down. Oh my god, right Pokemon world. That is, that, that's a, that is a whole thing. There we are, finally. Oh! I see. You know... The thing about Amori... I actually wouldn't be opposed to playing it on stream again. Because I played it on stream... I played it, um... Actually, forget at this point if it was on stream or off stream. Ages and ages ago. And then I played it a second time, because the first time that I played it, my mic quality was so bad that it was basically unwatchable. But I'm not opposed to just cracking open a game and playing it a second time. Especially a game like, like, Amori's good, is the thing. Especially because... Without giving too much away, the game has two different routes based on a decision that you make at the near the beginning of the game. <laughs> in a different time, in a different place, there was red Pokemon world, green Pokemon world, blue Pokemon world, and yellow Pokemon world. The thing is, I played all the way through that first route, but I never played through the second route. I always said that I was going to, and then I made it through one stream, and then uh, things got in the way, and I just dropped it in favor of other stuff. So, frankly, I'd be I'd be okay with doing another doing another set of streams for it. Yeah, I saw the one I saw the one shot stuff. I ended up playing that. I've I've played one shot all the way through, both it and Well <laughs> Don't speak too much on that. But I have played all the way through it. And it's amazing, I love that game. I will say that it's it's not really a good game to stream or to record in general. It's the kind of game that you you kind of just have to play it yourself. Let's see. There is a connection to Omari sitting here somewhere. Where are you? Oh, it's on the top half. Must have completely missed this door. Okay. I don't think he did. loud. Oh. What? There's an alternate version of the top half with slightly different connections. It's hard to describe, so the old top half will be called the normal top half.
Okay. Well. Brace your ears, I'm going back in. Leading to door eight of the normal top half. So I head through here. That's why this has been so confusing. Because there's, there's actually 20 doors up here. Okay, door eight of the normal half. So I move one over. This should be a connection to Omaris. Ah, yes. That's 100% what this is. <laughs> That's so funny. Where does this even drop you off? It's not even listed. Damn. By the way, this is one big map. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where I am in this map. But I'm somewhere. If I go off of muscle memory, maybe I'll find something. I still haven't found any of the forks. Oh. Oh my god, wait. Okay, I have a lead. Found it. Right here. <laughs> One of these days I have to I have to actually make an Omer rice for myself, because it, apparently it is it is good. Apparently it's tasty. But I've never had it, and my only experience with Omer rice has been this game which uh, does not fill me with the greatest of confidence. Dim Graveyard, Chromatic Limbo. Is that everything? Hmm. I think that's almost everything. So, yeah. That will probably do it for me, then. <laughs> the most edible Tukey world, I mean, is probably Omaris, right? Is that that, or hang on. There's one in um, Mushroom, off of Mushroom World. Right here. Behold, ice cream desert, or ice cream desert, ice cream dream. I, th I think there's also ice cream desert. I don't remember for sure for certain. It doesn't get much much tastier than that. Oh yeah. That'll probably do it for me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go offline in just a moment. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Blah, 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 blah. Words. Thanks so much for watching.